G'day and uh, welcome back to our uh, lecture uh, from Adelaide. My name is Manulua and um, I'm here to uh, uh, to talk about talk about a, uh, a sheep production system. I got the lecture notes. It's going to be sent to you earlier than you get this. Uh, before you get this video so you can uh, write notes uh, it might what stuff that I uh, will talk about in um, in in here on the video it may not be in the in your lecture notes but uh, it's important to uh, listen to it and uh, take some notes so sheep uh, production system um, Uh, I I know that uh, Hango uh, from Samuela, the former, uh, had to uh, contact me a few years ago, uh, asking me for some uh, ear tags for your sheep, and I I can uh, um, assume that you still have sheep. Uh, flock in Hango. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned uh, before that when I left Tonga there was no sheep near but uh, I may in your lecture notes uh, there's some system in there it's actually practiced in Australia so I can uh, uh, figure out that in Tonga so is very different so for example you don't shear the sheep for wool all right uh, I can guess that in Tonga you just uh, produce sheep just for meat only so it's in your notes I did uh, uh, write down in your notes but I still have to tell you something about sheep uh, uh, a little bit uh, of the breeds that has been uh, the crossbreeding breeds of sheep they are good for meat and there's some they're good for wool so you just have to read them and uh, so you can understand what they uh, yeah so how to manage them uh, if we go into the inputs uh, inputs uh, and process and outputs uh, you can put here uh, something like the sheep the, but then you have the in Australia you got shearing uh, shearing sheds so this one will have the equipment for the to shear. Shear is when you is a term to how to cut the wool and um, uh, to to make the fleece. Okay, fleece and uh, and wool. When we talk about wool, is when before you cut them. But one once you cut them uh, and take up this like a uh, the, the sheet of uh, wool and you take it out is called is that's what we call fleece okay uh, fleece is okay is when you take it out so if there's a term that is a uh, uh, if you fleece someone means you're stealing uh, something you take away from someone so it's the same term it's a good term that you uh, you have to learn when you when you uh, uh, but in in Tonga I don't think they shear uh, they shear the sheep in there you probably have the breeds that is just uh, not for wool it's just for meat uh, only but you still need to go through 
the inputs okay so process and input here is just meat and wool okay and there's some breeds they breeds for milk as well um, milk okay this one is only a few few breeds they good in milk but mostly that's the the uh, there's some breeds uh, I put in there Suffolk uh, they're really good um, in Australia that's a lot of uh, sheep farming they farming for wool and they export it uh, from Australia to uh, China uh, and Middle East okay So this wool, it's a uh, uh, breed, I think is Merino, is in your notes, Merino breed. Uh, and some other, I, I'm not sure, there's some, they're dual purpose. Uh, when I say tool purpose, I guess that some of you uh, already know this term. Tool purpose breeds is uh, breeds that is good in meat and they good in wool as well. Okay, I better hook this up. Okay. It's just some notes for me to remind me what we talk about. I think most of them, most of things that in my head, but uh, uh, okay. So uh, when you run a sheep farm, you still, you are, you still need to go through, uh, you need a paddock, you need pasture, you need uh, uh, water troughs, uh, you need uh, shelters as well, okay, and a stockyard. The only difference is the fence for sheep is uh, a lot lower and stockyard, okay. They're very easy to control. Uh, they're very weak animal. Uh, you probably, once you read the Bible, you can read the Bible, you know what the sheep's uh, behavior and uh, and the way of their thinking. They go in groups, they are very good in uh, forming relationships with each other. That's why once a sheep go that way, they, everyone go more in there. They rely on each other to protect themselves from predators, okay? Dogs or wolves or even, even other uh, countries they they have a, 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 a more wild animals in there so they're very they work together okay but we kind of there are some facts that I want you to about sheep to think about because sheep is very uh, what term is very uh, delicate a, uh, animal is very uh, fragile they uh, they're very easy to to kill uh, for example their survival uh, strategy is very low okay you can find in the wild wild dogs uh, cows pigs chicken okay you can get these horses and camels and etc etc but you don't have wild sheep okay There's no wild sheep okay they big why because they can't survive they will die and if you read the Bible 
you can figure out why is God using sheep as most of the parables and and he referred his son to be the lamb of God and, you know if it's a it's a very very uh, important to know all these facts because you can figure out how to how to raise sheep based on their nature okay something like sheep they're very they don't drink dirty water okay okay they will drink it only if they have to but they reluctant to drink dirty waters if they go in the river and it's a waterfall coming down from here the waterfall here and in here they're wavy and the other end is they will they won't go and drink in this end here they have to drink in here all right because this one is too violent the water is too f you read psalm psalm 23 how to spell psalm psalm 23 david talk about psalm 23 it's like psalm 23 is like uh, the best in the psalms okay the lord is my shepherd and you know and so on david used these psalms as he referred the shepherd to god and he referred himself to be the sheep but remember david was a shepherd when he was a kid all right he knows exactly what the behavior of the sheep okay so he knows what the sheep need and so is god he's he they they eat from young leaves okay they eat from young leaves they they eat so when the, when they you know this behavior that means you have to get up and and replace the, the the water clean the water in the water trough and make it clean all the time okay because they like to drink clean water so the system is still the same as cows except you have to look after the sheep very closely okay you have to take them to the early in the morning while the young leaves have water from the dew from the rain at night and uh, they like to eat those ones they're very soft tasty and moisture okay and also uh, sheep have their wool this is a the best uh, insulator okay in the world this one when you wear a clothes any other um, synthetic material the wool from the sheep is the best insulator it will provide warm to the to this uh, when it's cold it's really really warm because that's the only thing that uh, um, that can supply warm into the to the to our body okay so before we we shear the sheep the wool is like this is the 
say the skin of the sheep here. Uh, the, we've got the flesh, the skin, and here is the wool. The wool is actually grow outwards like that. Okay, it's like a wavy. Okay. So, what happened is, when the air outside is 40 degree heat, that's really hot, that is in summer, in here, inside the sheep's body is mostly 37, okay? In the blood is 37, okay? The air of hot air coming in here, it could be more if it's in the desert or a very hot area in the in the desert. They can be reach up 48. So when the air is coming in, they travel here. Okay, the air is coming in here, and by the time it get here. The temperature is dropped, okay? When the hot air is coming here, it dropped, okay? Because this one is 37, this one is 40, 40 degree heat. It dropped down to match this, this one. So if the outside is really cold, can reach zero degree centigrade, that's freezing point, that's uh, that's about snow or minus, even minus degree centigrade, uh, minus three or, or so, or going a bit lower. The air will come in here, and before it gets into the body, it's already the cold air will go up to match that one. So that's why is the insul uh, wool is uh, is the uh, is what should I say a good insulator, okay? Uh, because it changed the air traveling through the wool to inside, so to match up this one, okay? So, one other thing is uh, this one is when you when you feel the wool, it feel like it's crazy. So crazy. Okay, it's like it covered with oil in there. So it covered with oil. That's what thing that uh, one thing that helped uh, uh, change the temperature is because it's crazy and the air is traveling slower. Also, its oil will, will just make the wool. It makes the wool. Uh, waterproof okay okay it makes it waterproof so uh, a sheep is actually uh, don't have the, the, the cold water going into it, its body okay that's why it Keep the sheep's body uh, consistent in the temperature, in the body temperature. They stay, they they can sit outside in a cold area, and they still have warm body inside. They're different, the goats and uh, cows and yeah. But that's the process of insulating. Is sheep 
keep its body temperature consistent to 37 degrees centigrade okay um, yeah they are they are one of the facts that we know that how we uh, we can adjust our system uh, to uh, to how we manage those uh, the production the production of the sheep we have to know all these facts okay uh, and also it's very easy to handle uh, very easy uh, to handle okay I'm um, when you shear the sheep you just walk in there and grab a sheep and bring it down turn it over and you can shear it without tying with a rope you don't tie the sheep with a rope you just sit in there and uh, it's in the Bible as well you know it's they they don't resist they they don't resist uh, and and it's uh, yeah it's a lot of book in the Bible is said you know they just lead uh, the son of God and he die on the cross it's just like a sheep that being slaughtered is no resistance okay so it's a uh, it's important to to figure out this uh, this one before you actually start a sheep farm so you know these facts uh, so like what I said before you, you just have to, you uh, you can have a uh, shelters fencing material that's important uh, shelters is uh, important for for calves uh, no not calves I'm thinking of uh, for lamb okay and also the mothers in there you, you have the term use is mum uh, ram is dad uh, and lambs okay the young 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 mums in in cows is called heifers but this one is called a uh, ewe calf so that's the young one uh, ewe lamb okay so when they have this term means the young mums young mothers I mean and young fathers so uh, that one I'm trying to make all these uh, videos shorter because it's very hard to send over a long videos it take a long time uh, wool week is the wool uh, yeah turn drink yeah docking and docking and musing that's yeah don't never never do this in Tonga because they um, there's a docking tail docking is uh, these two terms is when they the lambs they cut the tails off okay so when the lamb uh, they cut the tail the okay they cut it here because and mulesing is a very uh, very uh, cruel okay very cruel I mean it's very cruel uh, process because they they cut 
the tail that's okay tail talking and they cut the tail and musing is they they skin they take out the skin okay from here this area and and the flesh is exposed because when the, the scar tissue forms the wool won't uh, form in that area okay so wool is only going in here and there to there okay the sheep is like that but except that one okay you see a sheep is a uh, you don't see the legs it's just fat and uh, but they're not fat it's this area when the wool is in there when the uh, manure will collect in there and urine okay those two when they collect on the wool around here they attract it they blow fly okay uh, blow flow blow fly uh, blow flies okay it's called because it's always wet in in this area and always uh, have uh, uh, stuff here that attract the flies it's called fire strike when this fire strike attack this area they live in there remember the sheep here in Australia sheep farms are in a dry very dry area and in summertime flies is looking for something like moisture uh, they're looking for water you, you go in there you can start you know flies attacking you or they always come into your eyes or go in your mouth go in your nose and yeah it's it's hard you, they're they trying to get moisture okay in a dry area like Australia so when blow flies come in here say the skin is there and the wool is here the flies keep going in there and eat but they lay their eggs there okay inside the wool when these eggs hatch they got into larvae and larvas dig in here to the body okay so uh, eggs uh, blow flies eggs uh, they, they can uh, there are some other flies is uh, maybe I won't say blow fly because there are other types of of fly as well all right so the flies eggs uh, they lay it in here um, and when they hatch they um, they drill uh, this one is called uh, maggots okay that's uh, terms for larvae of uh, flies it's called uh, maggots and the maggots go into the flesh uh, cause the um, sheep to be very very sick so when they take that skin off the scar tissue is is uh, heal up on that open area and the wool the hair or we call it uh, won't won't grow in that scar tissue so when you see the calf the sheep when it's 
it's healed up looking from the back you uh, you have the tail here it's been tucked you've got the uh, wool around this area okay and from the back it's a, a clean area in here okay so it's this area here is no wool in there okay so um, it's a very very cruel uh, process musing but I don't know it's in your notes I put in there it's a very uh, controversial uh, process okay because if it's like dehorning uh, that I talk about some people didn't like to de to cut the horn because sometimes the blood come out from their bra from their skull but then if we leave it in there uh, it cause injury to others so it, it's uh, you have, have to have a very good evaluation but I'm glad they you turn to it in Tonga in Tonga you just kill the sheep and eat it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay those two things that I want you to to um, to think about I think that's about what I want to say for the sheep um, shoulders ears mothers and lambs yeah the paddock uh, it's in Tonga I can figure out that uh, it's no hay so this is this is the same design that I have for the cows and the uh, stockyard around here because they're smaller and the, the uh, for sheep very low uh, make sure they can reach uh, to the in they don't have the big trough for the sheep as big as the, the one for the cattle they have a little uh, like like that that's their water trough okay it's like a long uh, concrete kumete eh? and then there's a tap here okay a water tap here uh, that you go in there and uh, make sure they all uh, clean area concrete so it won't be from but make sure it's clean every day so you've got the trough here I suggest that you need to do a more uh, trough so one here and one there oh, oops one here so if you put the gate here for the stockyard just put the trough here same here and uh, okay so that wherever they go and that area here area there same here okay wherever they go if you have hundreds if they it's a hot day and the availability of water is always available okay so uh, always check the uh, system to make sure it uh, uh, the water system to make sure that uh, water is running in there and keep it full every day clean uh, and the pasture uh, here if you can uh, spray with uh, a broad leaf herbicide herbicide uh, I think is that's how it's spelled uh, herbicide is the weed killer okay so you brought broad leaf there's uh, some that you just spray into the to the weeds and it will just kill the weeds 
but leave the grass growing. So that's why it's called broadleaf hepside, because um, most of the weeds they're broad leaves, and the grass will leave. So that's a good system. Is that this one? It makes sure there's no weeds. Okay, so remember their sheep, they're very, very uh, weak. They they can't, they, like, they don't like goats. Goats is the, it's very hard to handle <coughs> because they can jump over the fence. Uh, and they, goats can eat almost everything, okay? So, um, yeah, when we talk about goats, goats just... Uh, um, live in nothing. They just, yeah, they they yeah. That's the. Uh, I think that's that's it. Almost forty minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, um, for your attention and uh, um, one thing I want to say about your assignment I'll, I'll sneak it in here but don't worry about it because it's too late now by the time you get this so I let this one go but it's important I just forgot so it's my fault okay it's my fault not to tell you the reference for your assignments. References, okay. So I'll let this first assignment go, uh, but next assignment I'll, I'll uh, make sure that everyone will they put in their references uh, of any books or any other person uh, who, wherever you're, your uh, information you write in your assignment, you are uh, send it to me uh, with the references, means the name of the book. Uh, I'll talk about it in the, in the next assignment, but I'll let this one go, all right? It's just my fault. I'll make sure I'll remember this next time. So, all right. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.